the Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 12, Spiritual Teaching 347, Love Each Other. 1. On this day I receive you and I bless you. You bring your spirit ready, attentive to the voice of your conscience, to receive my teaching. I read in your heart, and I'm going to caress you and give you my word and it will be a balm that calms the hardships of your life. 2. But not only do I come to console you at this time, but to invite you to be my disciples. I come to tell you, take your cross and follow me. Remember in each of your steps my examples of the second era. My coming in man at that time was not in vain. 3. Written is my passion, my word, and my maxims in your spirit. There is the book that I have written in the three eras. There is my word given through all my envoys. There are the testimonials and facts. You can find everything in yourself if you learn to penetrate your spirit. You are no longer children spiritually because you have traveled the path and you are in maturity, in fullness. You who have heard my words in the first, second, and third eras, how could you doubt this message? How could you erase the announcements that I left written in your spirit if I promised to return? If I told you, once more, I will be between you. But I did not tell you in what way. I only gave you to understand. I pointed out the time and the events that they would speak of my return. I prophesied everything to you. Now I tell you, that there will be great tests for you to be certain that the Holy Spirit has come upon your spirit to complete his mission among humanity. 4. This is the time. All the announcements given by me have been fulfilled. All the prophecies of those who spoke in spirit and truth are fulfilled. 5. Here I am, always among you. I have not hidden myself. In this time understood since my departure in the second era until my coming in the third, I have always been present for humanity. My light has always vibrated between you. My love is the same. My teaching and examples too. It is just a different phase. I have come at this time materializing my word to make you understand me. I have taken your language so that you can understand my inspirations, and here you have me, people, full of love among you, with open arms, and as the father receives his prodigal son, this is how I have received you. But I want you to become my disciples. I want you to witness all my words and statements. I want to leave written in your heart the testament of the third era the precious book that corresponds to this stage. 6. You have listened to my words through countless spokespersons. Each one of them has a commission of mine, a very important part to fulfill in this time. His responsibility is very great, and after this time of the communication through the brain of man, I will hold each of these spokesmen accountable, and they will answer me of my words, of the light that I gave to his brain to be translated into words and delivered to the faithful people, to the people who love me, and they will have to answer to me. But the people will also have to answer me with all the words who has received and reached the time of full practice. I will hold everyone accountable. 7. Today I have come to you as father and as teacher. My judgment on the people of Israel has not been unleashed. I have not come to still ask you for the harvest. Today I still give you the time, but I tell you, take it to practice, to study, to penetrate in my doctrine that is deep, so that you can love me and follow me forever. 8. I have for each one of you a place in my spirit. When you have won that award, you will come to me. Meanwhile, fight on earth, and then fight in the way in which it was my will to send you, 
so that you can present your fulfillment to me. Think that I always accompany you, that my gaze follows you everywhere, that my protection is infinite for each one of you, that your pains do not go unnoticed by me, that I am reading deep in your heart and I know your future. 9. Then people love me. Study my doctrine so that you can understand everything I want to tell you and what I want you to do. I, as a father, come full of love to give you commandments and charges because you are the people responsible for humanity who has to be the teacher, the example, the guide. For this reason, day by day, I have taught you. That's why my word has not stopped. I have given you a long time so that you can listen to me so that you can finally open your understanding and prepare your heart to understand me. 10. In the second era, only three years did I speak to you. My word was incessant. I spoke day and night to the disciples, to those who came to listen to me. I lived with you. You watched all my acts. You attended my birth. You contemplated my growth as a man. I did not hide from you. I wanted all my actions to be known, and you judged me, people, without being a judge. You judged my innocent age, my adolescent age. You judged my passion, and being my creature, for instance, you ignored me. You being part of myself, being my son, you judged my acts as a father. 11. I am love and forgiveness. I contemplated your judgment with mercy and I told you, one day, after long trials and great experiences in your life, you will recognize the love that Christ poured out on humanity, his laws, his charity, and never more will you stray from the path that he has outlined for you. You will mourn your past and ask me for opportunities to repair all your faults, to fulfill my mandates and you will voluntarily become my servant. But I do not want to contemplate you as a servant. I want you to always be my son, my disciple, because I have no vassals. You are all my creatures to whom I have given my attributes, my power, and my grace. You all belong to me. Even when the world does not recognize me, he belongs to me, and I have the right to love him. You cannot prevent me from loving you, humanity, but you must fight to remove all disturbances from your path and look for the light that will take you to the port of salvation. 12. You have found countless trials in this time, beloved spirits. You have stumbled many times. Your flesh itself makes you cry. But isn't the spirit stronger than the flesh? Have I not given you immense power so that you fight against all adversities? Are you not part of my own spirit? You have the strength, the virtue, and the energy. Everything you need to fight against all the dangers that you will encounter for your spirit. Today I warn you people, because greater dangers than those you have encountered today, you will find in your path. But not for this do you stop at the path. Not for this allow your brain to be disturbed. 13. I have announced to you the time of persecution, of the trials of men of different beliefs. But you are my disciples. You have the power and the light, and with it, you will be able to win over all the ideas, over all the lights that men introduce to you. You will not be able to show him material books or any material work. You will only present your faith and love and these virtues that are spiritual. You will not be able to touch them. You will feel within you that a great faith invade your being and this will be enough to get ahead. You will be in the path of others like an invulnerable column. 14. Even if materialistic ideas come to you, even if they want to seduce you with science, you will not bend your word before them. You will feel fully in your heart my love beating, 
living my law that is inexorable, that is immutable through the ages, and you will know how to transmit it to the generations that will spring from you, because I will leave this people as teachers of others. I will take each one of you as the trunk of a great tree, that I will branch according to my will. The greater your virtues, the greater the light of those who are to follow in your footsteps. 15. Fight for yours. Fight for the faith of the creatures that I have left in your care. They bring grace and power and take a step forward on the path of spirituality. They will affirm your words and when you fail them, they will remember the law that their parents practiced on earth and will be faithful to it. 16. This is the history of the people of Israel, of this people who will continue to be faithful to me, because I have appointed them as the depository of my light, of my wisdom. You have a delicate position before humanity. You will no longer be able to bow to one side or the other. You know your path. You know that your Father has descended to you, materializing to speak to you, to lead you, since you were still prepared to communicate with me from spirit to spirit. 17. I made my manifestations palpable and my word clear so that you could understand me. Moreover, after this time, after this year of 1950, you will know with certainty the path that you will have to follow. You will communicate with me and your intuition will tell you how you should practice my doctrine, how you will bring this precious seed to the hearts that have need. You will not waste a single grain or sow it at random, but you will deposit it wherever the earth is prepared, wherever your intuition tells you that this seed has to germinate and thus you will be like a sower. 18. You will rise up in imitation of the apostles, sowing the seed in the ways of humanity, in the heart and in the spirit. But the book that you will present will be the book of your own life, your own example, your faith and trust in me. It will speak louder than your words. It will convince more than what you can say in the form of word. Therefore, people, from today, form great purposes of fulfillment. 19. I'm going to leave you in my place. The lips of the spokesman will be silent, but your lips will be prepared, your heart inspired. I have to guide you along that path of infinite inspirations, and tomorrow you will talk about lessons still unknown to you. 20. I'm going to make you penetrate into the bosom of the hearts that await me. You will go as my invoice to speak of the sacred revelations with the respect and love with which you have listened to me through man. Your mouth will be ready, but you must watch over your words, because your lips will never lie. I, from the beyond, I will contemplate you, and your examples will be written in indelible letters. Yes, people of Israel, step by step, do, get on the path of fulfillment. All works need time to be understood. I have given you this time so that you can reach fullness, maturity, and enter the path of spirituality. 21. I have not uprooted you from your past customs in an instant, but step by step. I have made you abandon those that were not agreeable to your master. I have taught you to pray with the Spirit. I have told you how you should converse with your Father, penetrating in silence, in meditation, and in communion with your God. 22. Thus you will continue walking, people. Prayer will be your bulwark. Faith will be your salvation. In the hours of testing, my presence will be with you. Inwardly, you will hear my greeting, as in this time, my peace be with you. And you will feel, then, the confidence that my strong arm is in your arm, and that what you will do in compliance with my word will be blessed and approved by me. 23. 
Now you have remained around me as infants and disciples, and I have taught you with love. I have poured my most sweet words in your heart, so that you may feed on them. The Spirit feeds on love. There is no other sustenance for Him. That is why when you move away from this love, from this essence that is in my word, you feel the emptiness, the orphanhood, the need to receive this caress. And when you return to me once again, you fill with this crystalline water, the emptiness of your heart. 24. I have come to fill that source so that you do not feel thirsty, so that you are always full of grace and inspiration, so that the love of my spirit may live in your heart. The fountain will not run dry, people, even when my word ceases under this form. In your prayer, in your ecstasies, you will continue to receive my effluvia, my phrases. Everything will be understandable to you. I will not use strange language later, but in the spiritual language in which I have spoken to you, I will continue speaking. The greater your preparation, the greater the lessons you will be able to understand. 25. How many revelations will I make to you people? Everything that has not been said through man, I will tell you by spirit to spirit. But before this, you will have to continue practicing prayer with eagerness. You will go from prayer to ecstasy and elevate your spirit. You will feel how the Divine Master makes his word clear. How in one sentence he tells you everything in that phrase that I give you, you will analyze it. You will make it known to your brothers, and the people will be able to continue studying in this form after 1950. 26. I will not leave you idle for a single day. If you are prepared, my inspiration will be constant. I will reveal to you whenever I find you prepared great lessons pertaining to the Spirit, and I will give you great prophecies that will serve the new generations, because you will leave written many teachings. After 1950, I will allow you to write those inspirations so that they are not erased from fragile memory, so that they remain for all time as a legacy for humanity and that immense hunger that makes this world present to me that thirst for love and truth, for understanding, for spiritual revelations, will be quenched by the teaching that the people of Israel, as an emissary, has to take to him, to all portions, to the great multitudes. 27. The time of the universal judgment has arrived and all works and all religions will be judged by me. From the spirit of man a cry will rise, because everything that is false will be exposed. The truth will shine only. The awakening, it will be in humanity, and then men will say to me, Father, give us your support. Give us a true light that guides. And that light and that support will be the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. It will be the teaching that I have given you, and that belongs also to those and to all, because I am the Father of one and of all. 28. My spirit already contemplates the orphanhood of men, the emptiness that each one carries in his heart. I see how they search to fill that void with earthly pleasures and find nothing to quench their thirst. They seek everywhere that relief the balm, and they do not find it either. And until when, humanity asks? And in whom are we to find that balm and that peace? And the Father tells you, humanity, I am waiting for you. Everything you need is in me and is in you. But you have not known how to look for it. You have lost yourselves in different ways and you have sought peace where it does not exist have searched for true love and light where they are not. Seek me, and you will find the love that will fill your heart, the calm, light, and balm. You are already tired of your search, and you do not touch the doors of my spirit. You are foolish, 
but I wait for you, and when you knock on my door, it will soon open, and I will let you in. I will show you all the riches of the kingdom, and I will console you of your past sufferings, and then you will mourn the lost time. You will mourn yours that are missing, and you will ask me for forgiveness and a new opportunity. I will give you everything, everything you asked for the good of you, and I will give it to your brothers. My riches have no limit, but they are spiritual. If you ask me for this flow, I will give to you everything, and I'll tell you, take advantage of it, because each of the graces and gifts that I give you is from eternal life, and is for everyone. 29. Thus, people, I have come at this time, and some of you have contemplated me as a pilgrim, knocking from door to door to the nations of the world. Some have opened their door, the others have remained closed, but I'll keep calling. I will fulfill my mission as father and teacher. I will lead you step by step to my path. I will give you the light, and you will all reach the reflection, and you will understand the reason for your life. The purpose is love, compliance with my laws. And while this you do not do, as long as you do not practice love, as long as you do not fulfill my mandates, you will keep getting lost. But I have set a limit, and that limit is about to arrive. 30. After that great universal test that is announced, that you drain the last drops of the bitter cup, it will be the principle of restoration. At that moment, humanity has to repent and has to return to the path, has to know all his faults, and he has to find me. 31. Yes, people of Israel, you who are a witness of my manifestation, who hear how I speak and judge humanity, listen to me also with attention. Take my words, because you are part of that humanity. You also showed my spirit the emptiness of your heart. You also arrived thirsty and hungry. But in the fountain of love, you quenched your thirst. Well, think of those who have not yet reached the point of finding me, because evil has been more powerful in them. But one day, that evil will be bound. 32. Humanity has to find a wide field to fulfill my laws, to reform itself and to live in peace with me. I have made her walk all the roads because I want to find her full of experience. The man, my son, who has come to earth of my own free will, he has passed through the thousand trials that afflict the spirit. But after that, if his faith stands firm, how great will be the reward to be achieved. After tribulations, disturbances, and dangers, he must find the light of my spirit. 33. Therefore, people, do not be afraid to enter the trials. Do not be afraid to find yourself in great conflicts. In them, you will not lose. I will make all my children penetrate into that preparation so that their sensitive fibers awaken. After the tests, experience, and fruit, I will speak to you and tell you, here is how helpful the test has been, how you have strengthened in it, and how you are safe and sound. My will is not that you get lost. My will is just that you can temper your spirit and despite the trials and whirlwinds, love me and recognize me. 34. There are nations that have hurried trials by fire, bitter trials, but for them I have a reward. All those who have suffered patiently and have trusted in me, they will have spiritual peace. They must rise above all those vicissitudes, bearing witness to the Father, and the people of Israel must gather that witness. 35. My word has repercussions in all areas. I have shown you all nations, people. 
When talking to you, I have spoken to you of their sufferings and their need, and I have told you. Pray, people. Stay awake. Do penance so that you can accompany those nations in their trials. You are the strong one because you have stepped on the good path. Pray and prepare yourself so that you will be a bulwark for others, so that you will reach out your hand and give charity to everyone who requests it. You can do charity to your brothers even if you don't know them. Your spirit, which has great power and is clothed with grace, can send you that good of which I have adorned you. That is why I ask you, first of all, love people. Love so that you can recognize me and you. Love is the principle of my law. Love is the purpose of all works. It is what I have come to teach you at all times. Love, peace, and charity, these virtues, they are in you. You will not even have to learn to love. 36. Love is not learned, but is felt. It is carried within. And you, like all creatures, have received all his gifts and attributes. Then penetrate yourselves. Seek the virtues that I have left in your being and practice them in your ways. 37. How happy you will be, Israel, when you can carry out your mission among humanity, when you can develop and make your gifts palpable, when you sow and reap fruits that are pleasant and satisfactory for my divinity. The time for full practice has not yet come, but it is drawing near. It is the time when you will find yourself in front of humanity and you will have to use all the light, all the prudence, so that your steps are firm, so that your testimony is true. 38. Thus do I prepare and warn you. Every day that you have my word, you hear a warning, an advice from me, because tomorrow it will be necessary. Today, you are at peace listening to me, but stages of great struggle will come, and for those times, I want you to be prepared, that you are united, and that this unification makes you strong, so that there is not a single vulnerable point. But in the precise moment of my departure, as well as the Father on earth, surrounded by all his children, gives the last recommendations, and the children await the last moments of that life, so the people of Israel gather around me to hear my last words and promise to love each other and strengthen in their virtues, to be one body and one will that guides humanity. This is how I want to leave you, people, full of responsibility, but also grace, so that you will be strong in every instant. 39. I bless you, Israel. In the different houses where you congregate, I bless your good practices. I give more sensitivity to your heart, and I say to you, everything that is not perfect, that does not lead to me, set aside, so that in the right moment, be judged by the Father, and the people of Israel do not receive a sentence of pain, nor contemplate once more their master on the cross, bleeding and dying for your imperfection. But may you contemplate him full of love, teaching all mankind. 40. On this day of grace, in which I have come to strengthen you, to give you my word, that is sustenance for you, I leave you prepared and forewarned. These are the last times of my word. I want you to hear me in them, until the last moment, so that my word be impressed on your spirit, enlighten and strengthen you, for the times to come. 41. This is my lesson today, people. Pray for yourselves and for the people of Israel who are on the edge of the great judgment. Pray for the world that is also on the brink of a great trial. Do not let a single day go by without lifting your spirits and consider all these tests. I have listened to your request and I will grant you according to my will. 42. Blessed are you humble, those who know how to expect from my charity, 
those who, knowing that a will greater than theirs is upon you, you grant me the right to dispose of your life. I bless you, my children, your cross. It will be light. 43. To those of you who stubbornly ask me, why have we been tested? I say to you, be silent. Do not ask me why. Do you know your debt to me? Do you know in what way I will wash your spirit so that it returns as pure as it sprouted from me? That is why I tell you, only receive with patience and preparation the tests that I send you every day, for that my strength is always with you. 44. I grant you the light that you need to guide you correctly and guide yours on the path of salvation. 45. I grant you the precious gift of communication with your Father who will save you in all trials. In this dawn, my balm and my consolation are with all of you. It is with the world and with all the creatures that have sprouted from my bosom. My peace be with you.